Question 27. We have an expression for the force on a spring, and we know the initial position and the final position of the spring. We're looking for the change in potential energy of the spring. Again, we're going to use the equation for a conservative force that's not on the equation sheet. And that equation is that the force is equal to the negative derivative of the potential energy associated with that force with respect to position. Now what we're going to do with that is we're actually going to rearrange it and use an integral. So we multiply by dx and then take the integral of both sides. So we take the integral uh, from an uh, initial potential energy to final potential energy on the left and from initial position to the final position on the right. And I've substituted in the equation for our force uh, as a function of position. So now, we simply take the integral of both sides. So on the left-hand side, we get the final energy minus the initial energy. On the right-hand side, we get 40x squared divided by 2 minus 6x cubed divided by 3, the negative of, from our initial position of 0 to our final position of 2. The final potential energy minus the initial potential energy works out to be the change in potential energy, which is what we're trying to find. And we can now substitute our, in our initial and our final values for our position. So we get negative of the quantity 20 times 2 squared minus 2 times 2 cubed minus, and if you substitute 0 into this, you get 0 for the whole thing, so I'll put minus 0. So the change in potential energy equals the negative of the quantity 80 minus 16, which works out to be positive 64 joules. The correct answer is D. Uh, Mr. B? Uh, yes, Bobby? If this is a spring, why can't we just use the equation for the energy stored in a spring? Yeah, one half kx squared. Don't you mean one half times the spring constant times the displacement from equilibrium squared? <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good stuff. Right. Uh, okay, so this equation. Uh, this would be the energy stored in a spring, and that's only true when it uh, follows Hooke's law, which this equation does not. The force of the spring does not equal negative kx, as you can see in the equation. So this would only be true when the force of the spring equals negative kx.